So a little over a month ago, Polymaker announced their newest line of PLA, HTPLA, or high temp PLA. And I was lucky enough to get a few spools before it sold out. So I wanted to put it to the test. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been printing parts out and putting them in environments that normal PLA wouldn't fare so well in, including my car, sitting outside of my porch, and holding some weight in the third bay of my garage, which isn't climate controlled and during the summer months gets pretty warm in there. Not only did I wanna see how well does it fare inside of a pretty warm environment with little to no airflow, but I also wanted to see how it would hold up under a load in those warmer temperatures. Now, Polymaker doesn't make any claims that this PLA is any more UV resistant than their normal PLA, but I wanted to test it. Now this stuff is pretty standard as far as pricing goes, at least for Polymaker's line of filaments. It runs about $24.99 a spool for their regular HTPLA and around $29.99 for the HTPLA glass fiber. Now let me just preface this all by saying none of these are scientific results. I'm not an engineer and I'm just having fun here. But I figured that's probably the most real world situation for most people out there. Now my guess is you'll probably look at parts like this and go, well that's obviously not gonna hold up and you'd be right. However, that's kind of the point. What I wanted to see is not if this would hold up over a long period of time, but how much it would deflect or bow or bend or how much it would droop and specifically how much it would droop while it's under a load. So this is the part that I put out of my third garage bay. Let's roll the footage. So I mounted these to the wall in a obviously a standard fashion. There's two screw holes on the front here and I wanted to see over time in a heated environment or a non-climate controlled environment, would this bend, would it break, would it flex? Would anything change between standard PLA and HT PLA? Now, the only color that I was able to get in their regular HTPLA is teal. So this is just standard PLA, obviously HT though, high temp. Then I picked up a spool of their Power Tool Green, which is glass fiber reinforced HTPLA, what you're seeing right here. We've got Power Tool Red, which I actually haven't printed anything out with yet because I'm kind of saving this for some other projects. And then on the 5M Pro behind me, we've got HTPLA glass fiber in black. So my initial thought with those outdoor planter hangers, those ones that we saw on the porch, wasn't just to test the UV resistance, it was actually to test how they hold up under a load while they're outdoors in 90 to 95 degree heat, as well as the UV test. But my first test on that didn't go so well. They were originally designed as planter hangers, but I failed to realize that I don't have any plants that I can hang on the planter hangers. So I filled up a five gallon bucket with some water and well, obviously they broke because they weren't printed with that much weight in mind. Nor do I think even if I printed them at a super high infill or wall count that they would have actually held up to begin with. So for the purposes of this test in this video, they're just gonna be used to test the UV resistance. So on the right side, we have regular Polymaker PLA and on the left side is the HT PLA. You notice the difference between these two? They both started out with the same exact color. So what's that tell you? Obviously a non-scientific, inconclusive result, but just from a first glance, the HDPLA looks like it's less dull, whereas our regular PLA here seems like the sun has kind of done a number on it. Now these have only been out for about four days, so they are gonna stay out for a little while longer, but pretty interesting results right off the bat. If you're designing a product, but aren't ready for injection molding, PCBWay's SLS and MJF 3D printing services give you strong production quality nylon parts at a fraction of the cost. Unlike FDM, these prints have no visible layer lines, superior strength, and high heat resistance, making them ideal for functional parts, prototypes, and short production runs. You get the speed of 3D printing with the durability of manufactured parts, and no expensive tooling required. Start your next 3D printed project today with SLS or MJF 3D printing with the help of PCBWay at PCBWay.com. Now, traditionally speaking, regular PLA isn't that good for things that are, I guess, in warmer climates. So I wanted to test that out. Now, these two parts don't look like anything special. They've been sitting in the car though for four days now. This is our regular PLA. Mm. 
no sort of deflection or anything. And same sort of results with the HTPLA. Now I will say the reason I printed these particular because coins tend to get very warm. Actually, it is slightly more difficult to get these coins out of the regular PLA than it is to get them out of the HTPLA, which tells me that this is possibly deformed. Yeah, these are... It's stuck in there. Whereas these just kind of freely come out. That was kind of my thoughts. In fact, every single one of these is more difficult to get out. But it's definitely closed in or had some sort of effect that caused these coins to be either melted into the surface or just straight up it started to warp the piece. Whereas every single one of these ones, just as easy to get out as it was to get in there. I'm gonna leave them up on the dash for a couple more days. As far as the actual print quality goes, the glass fiber reinforced versions look awesome. The addition of the glass fibers actually do a lot to hide the layer lines. Now, obviously nothing that's 3D printed is perfect, but if we compare it to its non-glass fiber reinforced counterpart, I'd say the results speak for themselves. Now, obviously these results aren't anything scientific. Like I said, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer of any kind. I'm just a dude in his garage having fun with filament. But isn't that what most of us are doing anyways? So while my tests might not be the most accurate results, they are the most accurate real world results that I could come up with. Because my guess is that people who are printing stuff out with these are just gonna look at the marketing material and they're gonna go and use it like they would use any other filament that they buy. If you wanna see those type of results, My Tech Fun has a great video that he released the day that the HTPLA was announced, and I'll link that down in the description below. He put those things through his normal tests and actually has what I'll call more scientific results from that. So I'll be sure to link that down in the description below. So I'm gonna use these as I guess what I'll call our base results. We've got the HTPLA and then the regular Elegu PLA, and then we can compare them against the ones that were hanging on the wall. So day three, don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but this is sagged pretty significantly and it's starting to crack up there at the corner there. Same goes for this one. Now, I fully understand that this is not the ideal situation, the ideal setup for something like this, but I wanted to see in probably the worst possible conditions how these brackets would hold up, especially during the summer months where it gets pretty warm in here. And I didn't even touch it right there on camera you can see what happened to it that, that was like i couldn't have pressed the record button at a more perfect time i was just going to take them down i hadn't even got my hand on it yet so we've got failure right there haven't touched it yet So what does this tell us? Well, we can see this is definitely sagging. It's not a 90 degree angle anymore, but neither is that one. Now, again, obviously these both would have performed better if there was a bracket or an angled piece down at this bottom portion here to prevent stuff like this from happening. But this is the same result we've seen with both the glass fiber version of the HTPLA and the non-glass fiber version. This is Elegoo PLA. I printed these models out specifically because I wanted them to fail. I didn't think they would fail like that. I thought they would more fail like this one where it starts to droop down. But I guess we have our answer, especially considering this has been up one day less than this one because the glass fiber version of the HTPLA did the same thing. Albeit, I've already broken this a little bit more, but essentially the exact same result. And this is the glass fiber variant of it. So I'm not satisfied with these results. I think these can do better, both of them. So I added a wall thickness to each of them, and I also upped the infill percentage from 15% to 20%. And before you go and hear me a new one, because I only had it at 15% infill, again, these were designed to allow some flex to it. So I didn't want it to be so stiff that it was gonna not show us any results, if that makes any sense at all. So I've got three new versions here. Granted, two of them were supposed to be our control pieces, but I don't know how much we actually need that. I am gonna take that one printed in regular PLA off the wall and put it up against 
our control piece here just so we can see how much it's flexed. But then I'm going to put this on the wall and I'm going to put our new version of the glass fiber up on the wall and give it another run. So just lining both of the parts that mounted against the wall up against this line on our floor. See, we've got a pretty good deflection there from our original piece. And it does look like there's a stress mark on the inside there where it was starting to have uh, some points of breakage. Definitely didn't get as bad as that one though. And if we stick one on top of the other with our brand new print on the bottom and lining up our original print on the top, see again, there's about a half inch deflection that was caused with the regular PLA. Those results though, I can't say I didn't expect. All right, well, we kind of have our answer for this one. And this is just our regular HTPLA non-glass fiber version. So I'm gonna keep our control piece and we're gonna get the new versions of the regular PLA up on the wall along with the glass fiber HTPLA. See if we get a different result. Both are printed with four walls, five top and bottom layers, and 20% infill. So we're gonna do our four foot parallel clamp first. I'm gonna to try to keep the bottom of the parallel clamp about lined up. We'll do our 30 inch parallel clamp. And another 30 inch. Now we wait, regular PLA, HD PLA. All right, day four, I think this is. We put these up yesterday. As you can see, the glass fiber one has once again broke, but it is snapped right there at the corner. This one's starting to do it, but it's definitely not broken like the glass fiber version is. I don't know if I'll be able to get these off without this completely breaking. No. Yeah, it snapped in the exact same fashion that it snapped before. And this is probably, I don't even think this is 24 hours later, if I'm being honest. This is just regular Elegoo PLA, and that's the Polymaker HT PLA glass fiber. It's the third or fourth one that I've put up there that's had the same exact results. So maybe it's just an anomaly with this particular part, but the fact that the regular Elegoo PLA is still holding up, albeit a little bit deformed, and this one just seems to crack. Ugh. I had higher hopes for it. It just kind of peels away right at the walls. And again, both of these are printed with this face down. I'm not really sure what to think about that, to be honest with you. But it's about 95 degrees outside, and that's just, yeah, that's not holding up well. This, on the other hand, well, it's still bending a little bit. I mean, it's sitting on a super hot dashboard, 95 degrees outside, and it's been there for quite some time. It seems to be coming back into its normal position, whereas this one obviously is just like, it, it almost feels like TPU. So definitely has a higher heat resistance, like they claim. That's for sure. That's pretty insane, actually. This is hot to the touch. So between these two parts, aside from a slight color shift, I don't really notice any discernible difference. Obviously, this one does appear to have a little bit of a stress mark there, right at the seam, whereas this one doesn't. But aside from that, they're pretty much both the same. Now, like we saw with the parts in the car, if it was to get super hot out and you had a load on this one, it would definitely flex down. But since I didn't have a load on it, something that's just sitting outside, I don't really see a big difference. Now, obviously these are meant to be planter hangers, so take that for what it's worth. If both of them had a plant on each of them and it got to 95 or 100 degrees outside, we'd probably see this one drooping down a little bit more than this one. But at this point, it's been a little over two weeks since we started our tests with the HTPLA from Polymaker. And I'm happy to say 
I mean, it does what it says it's gonna do. It's higher temperature resistance in the heat. And with the addition of the glass fiber reinforced versions, you do get a little bit of a nicer look on that part. There's no visible layer lines. And overall, it's just a nicer looking part. So I'm hoping to see Polymaker's HTPLA more readily available in the near future. Like I said, when I went to order this stuff originally, they only had a couple spools left in stock. Obviously, high demand product, brand new. It's PLA, so it's easy to print. Why wouldn't it be sold out as soon as they release it? I will be sure to leave a link in the description below to Polymaker's website for the HTPLA as well as the HTPLA glass fiber if you're interested in trying some out for yourself. With that said, just be prepared that it might not always be in stock and it might not be in stock when I go to publish this video because again, new product, PLA, high demand, high temperature resistance, you get the point, right? All right, I gotta get these printers rolling along with some other stuff, so I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.